Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Gaming Citicom video, we're going to be discussing and, of course, analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. Now, before anyone does write to me yet again, I have seen an awful lot of news concerning the update for Windows 10, which improves gaming performance. I'll try to get to that soon, because I have a Ryzen 3 CPU and a Threadripper processor, which we're going to be benchmarking anyway, so that kind of worked out rather nicely. But, sticking to the contents of this video, well, Intel and their Canon Lake architecture could be bringing the AVX 512 instruction set to the mainstream. We'll have a small set of updates for the GTX 1070 Ti. The fact that the iPhone X could actually see the introduction of several cheaper models, but I also want to throw in a bonus bit of news as well, and that is the dates for the next free Steam sales. This is according to Kotaku UK. As usual, I'll link all of this stuff in the description of the video. Side note, if you hear some explosions outside, I'm not suddenly transported into, you know, Call of Duty. What is actually happening is that it's, well, fireworks season in the UK, so people are deciding to let them rip like. Anyway, so there's going to be free Steam sales, and they begin next week. That is October the 26th, and it will last for just a few days until November the 1st. This is going to be the Halloween sale, and there's going to be the autumn sale, which uh, takes place over Black Friday. That's the 22nd of November until the 28th. And finally, drum roll, that is the 21st of December to the January 4th, uh, sale, which of course is the winter sale, which everyone absolutely murders themselves over. And typically you have like two pounds left in your bank account. So as usual, if there are some games that, well, you're kind of thinking, eh, maybe I should pick this up. <clears throat> well, now's your time. Anywho, let's talk about Intel and the Canon Lake architecture, shall we? So Canon Lake is going to be seeing the introduction of AVX 512. The purpose of this is to bring these instruction sets to the mainstream market, also known as mainstream desktop and mobile, and possibly other uh, type of uh, usage scenarios as well. Now, currently, as you're probably aware, Skylake X, the HEDT processors, as well as, well as Xeon, and also a couple of others such as the Xeon Phi uh, Knights Landing, do have variants of AVX 512. So, according to some documentation which Intel themselves have released with the rather snazzy name of Intel Architecture Instruction Set Extensions and Future Features Programming Reference rolls right off the tongue. Canon Lake's processors will support AVX uh, 512F, uh, AVX 512CD, all of these AVX 512, so I'm just going to continue to read, DQ, BW, and finally 512VL. So this means that we're going to see these CPUs to support the current level of Skylake SP-based processors, and in addition to that, we'll see microarchitecture of Canon Lake also support AVX 512 IFMA and also FBMI commands. But we're not sure at the moment whether this architecture, so whether this support is going to be limited, limited, God, I can't speak suddenly, to just servers, or whether this is going to be consumer orientated as well. Um, so why is this so interesting? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Canon Lake, initially, from what most of the rumours told us, it was going to be very similar architecturally to, let's say, Coffee Lake, but obviously on a smaller process and all of the other bits and pieces, but the fact that we are going to be seeing AVX 512 support means there are going to be some tangible architecture differences. For example, the fact that AVX 512 exists at all typically represents huge amounts of memory bandwidth being required, and obviously is all things such as large amounts of cache, memory controllers. So how all of this is going to be functioning, we're not quite sure. It's possible that not all of the Canon Lake client processes will support this. Therefore, some of them are going to just be for very high-end desktops and not necessarily the mainstream. So for the sake of argument, that would be like you won't be seeing some of these instructions on, let's say, the 8700K equivalent, which we'll assume will be the 9700K and the 9600K, but it does mean that, in theory at least, programs of PCs um, in the future should be pretty fantastic news for tasks such as video encoding, rendering, and other such usage scenarios. 
as usual what architecture changes really end up being for what different uh, segment of the market so in other words whether we see increased cash sizes or perhaps other changes we just don't know yet but this is a good thing I imagine for some you're probably wondering well does that mean I should just not buy Coffee Lake right now unfortunately that's down to you personally I do think that the 8700k the 8600k and its ilk are very impressive so if you do need to buy a new processor, you could certainly do much worse. I would highly suggest if you do need a CPU, you know, just rush out, buy one of those, or a Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7. Because while AVX 512 is fantastic, in theory, the problem is not many applications are currently using it. And this is one of the reasons that I stated in my Skylake X reviews that yes, the fact that these processors do support that is fantastic, but it's not necessarily a large advantage even over Threadripper. Okay, uh, some GTX 1070 Ti news. I'm just throwing this in for the bonus of it because otherwise people are going to message me. Uh, Asus ROG, their official Twitter, don't you know, has the rather simplistic tweet of frame rates a little choppy, but then we have some good news coming soon but can you solve the puzzle to learn what it is it looks very 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 similar to let's say a gtx 1070 tie because well what's on the right hand side it's a very difficult puzzle everybody very very difficult and on the same subject uh, videocards.com have managed to grab hold of some uh, kv sorry kfa2 uh, images for their own GTX 1070 Ti slash Ti and it looks rather spiffy as well although I do feel that a lot of graphics cards now look very similar often in terms of coloring and so on there's some subtle differences here on there but you know but let's face it this graphics card's probably one of the worst kept secrets of any GPU ever but hey I wouldn't be surprised if some of that is pure marketing speaking of pure marketing Let's have another segue to Apple, shall we? Uh, this is f news from the Japanese blog. Probably going to pronounce this incorrectly, but here we go. Makatakara? Anyway, they state that in 2018, Apple will be introducing two new models of the iPhone X. How much cheaper? Well, not much. About 100 US dollars cheaper. The uh, code names are Lisbon and Hangzhou. Now, it's quite weird because... When you consider the previous generation of, uh, well, code names, they were known as D10 and D20. That's for the iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus. So it's either they're doing something a bit different with their uh, naming conventions, or it could also be something else. Now, of course, the iPhone X did get some criticism simply because of its price point. And unfortunately, much of this is because... Samsung are charging Apple a premium for the OLED screens. Now, there is some debate on how much of a difference that really makes on the pricing. However, it does seem that uh, Apple will continue to be gouged by Samsung for the OLED technology until at least 2019. So it's possible that some other display manufacturers will be introduced and they will be, of course, producing parts for this particular phone but how all of this works and what the specifications of the iphone x successors slash cheaper variants are going to be well i just don't know and i have a feeling we're going to have to wait a bit to find out right i think that's just about it for this particular video hopefully you have found it somewhat informative i'll see you soon take care bye for now